Hey guys, it's JH. Welcome to Practice T. And winter's over, guys. <clears throat> the last four days have just been spectacular. Winter is gone. It's probably 26, 27 degrees today. Just hot. <clears throat> okay, what I want to do today, just for uh, channel lock. I notice with a, with a number of guys, and I get a lot of uh, uh, private videos from people, and I've had you know, probably a hundred from people about uh, channel lock, and they send me their their videos about channel lock, and and they're mostly all rank and file club players. The better player doesn't have this problem that I'm or issue that I'm going to talk about or refer to now, but the rank and file player does. And I would suggest that that's a player that you know, handicaps from, I don't know, maybe 12 up onwards, uh, 12 or 14 onwards. Even maybe 10, I don't know. But, but the better player, you know, the four and under type player, uh, I haven't seen that, this issue with them. But guys, what I do see very consistent in a lot of swings is this process at impact. Is that lead arm sucked into the body looking like this and this the toe toe supporting the weight and the heel off the ground and this action happening guys you can't you can't play channel lock like that you can't play any golf swing like that because that immediately eliminates the lead arm efficiency you can't generate any power you can't generate any storage and you can't generate any consistency of impact clearly there's just no integrity in a lead arm that's sucked into the body like that and the lead side here not supporting or stabilising the hit. It's the complete opposite of what you need to be doing in channel lock. In channel lock, or in any good golf swing, okay, in channel lock we have a predominance of weight driving down the trail axis here. But you also need support off the leading uh, vertical axis. You can't just drive the weight down there and just unload this here. In a channel lock swing, guys, we've got to feel like an impact like we're here. I push, I've, people are getting out of the ground. Their pressure's coming out of the ground. Guys, you've got to have your pressure in your feet and your legs going into the ground, not out of the ground. We don't want to be lifting up, we want to be forcing that weight into the ground. And why do we want to do that? Because it stabilizes the arms and the shoulders and just the whole body, just the stability of the body. As soon as you start releasing your hold on the ground here, in channel lock, you just get no consistency. And as soon as you start to, to, to let that, the purchase on the ground on that lead foot <clears throat> erode and dissipate, this whole lead side then can do whatever it likes. Invariably, the lead leg will straighten, the lead hip will move, it'll take the torso and take the shoulder. And there's no hit, guys. It's this type of look about it. There's nothing in that. We've got to get this type of look about it. We've got to have a lot of stability in the feet. Even if you hit a few shots, guys, where you keep... Just, just, just get an 8 iron or a 9 or whatever. And just hit some shots where you really feel like the weight is forcing down into the feet when you hit it like that. Try and keep that lead knee bent a little bit. As soon as you snap that back here, it's going to pull that lead hip around. If you can keep that lead knee a little bit bent, that'll corral the lead hip and stop it spinning and stop the torso as a knock-on effect starting to spin and taking the shoulder and of course then taking the hands. But we don't want this, we don't want this look about us guys. We want a really solid look about us. See that? That's all my weight's there. It's in, it's on the outside of my foot, it's in my heel there. At impact I, I had the trail foot down. The trail foot will come up a little bit after impact because there's a lot of weight sort of tending to and velocity tend to pull through. Now invariably people that get this look about them here are people that have no lead side uh, pull or dominance from that lead arm, that lead hand, that lead shoulder. 
There's none of that going on, guys. You can't get that look about you if you pull with that lead hump. Look, as soon as I pull with that, that forces the weight straight down that leg there. And I can feel it going into, you know, the, you know, the, the arch of my foot and, and in there. But I feel that. That's where it goes, there. But as soon as I drive that foot up, <laughs> I mean, I would hit the ball off the planet and, you know, with a five iron here, I normally carry a five iron, you know, 170 yards, 175 yards. Uh, I'd probably be lucky to carry it 150 yards. And there'd be no flight on it, just be awful. This is what, what I'm seeing with guys. This is what they look like here. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this arm sucked in here and all that weight off that leaf. Well, okay, it's not that, not that bad, but, and I can't replicate that because I can't do that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm programmed to keep the weight in there, so I can't do that. But, but, but it tends to look a, an awful lot like this guy. See this here? You can't play channel lock like that. That's an insipid golf shot. And, and most of the guys, you know, have got good athleticism, got good strength. But guys, you're in your own way. All right, so how do we get rid of that? Now, typical JH, I mean, you, you'd never learn. I mean, I've, I've set the camera up here in the worst possible position, grass one. Okay, guys, I've got a five iron. I've got a five iron. But what I'm going to feel I'm doing is pulling... I'm pulling with that lead arm here, and as I pull, I'm forcing, I'm forcing the weight into my feet. I'm trying to push my foot through the ground. That's what I'm trying to feel. I'm trying to push my foot through the ground. So I'm heavy in the feet. That's what I've got to feel like. And I'm really going to ex try and extend that lead arm. Now hit a couple like that guys, see both feet are down there, hit a couple of shots like that. Now that, that is really stabilising the hit. I have to pull with that lead arm and it helps because that lead, that lead leg is actually pushing, me, pushing back against me which is giving me something to pull against. If you've got no stability in that lead side you've got nothing to pull against with that lead arm. Remember the lead arm is a pull, now it's hard if you're a right handed person to pull with your lead hand but they both got to pull. But, but to get the, get the club coming in, into out, and get the lead shoulder up, you've got to pull it, guys. Pull it here. And it'll help if you keep both feet down and hit a few shots. It'll very much help that. Okay, it's just going to hit a little... sitting down into the shot and you'll feel your arms you'll feel your arms rocket away from your body that's what you'll feel you, you won't feel your arms sucking into your body sit into your knees guys get in here I see too many guys still looking like this you can't swing channel lock like that guys You've got to get your weight balanced and you've got to feel like you're heavy. You've got a heavy buttocks. You really have to have your weight feeling like it's heavy. Just hit a couple of shots like that. See those feet up. Now, there's no reason why. I mean, Mo Norman did it. There's no reason why you wouldn't keep both those feet down. The good thing about keeping both feet down, even in channel lock, is that it just stops the hip. And invariably the hips will take the torso and take the shoulders. So if you can actually keep both feet down, you know, hit a hundred shots like that, guys. Keep your feet down and keep your arms moving while your feet are down. Just think about that. Feet down and arms moving. There's nothing wrong with, uh, with, with doing that as a, uh, as a drill.
but I feel that this foot is really dominant. Now when you start to pull initially with your lead arm, if you've never done it before, you might hit a, you know, you just hit some blocks, you might even hit a couple of shanks because invariably when you're pulling, you've got this in your mind. You've got that feeling in your mind. Now it's not that guys, it's pulling but releasing. You pull and you release the face of the club. The forearm rotates that way. We don't pull it through like that with the elbow pointing at the target. The elbow's got to go back this way here. The elbow's got to point towards the target. So, so that's just an important facet. Oh, we'll hit a full shot. Feet down, a lot of pull off the lead side. Don't get any better than that. And see guys, I'm sitting into the shot. See this, I'm sitting into it. That's what you've got to cultivate a lot in this swing because the more you sit into the shot at impact, the more that you, you, you'll eliminate spin. As soon as you start standing up, you'll get a lot of spin. And once it starts, it'll start from the ankles up into the knees, into the thighs, into the hip, and then it just goes on from there and you're dead. So, yeah, look, I have occasions out here when, when I get a bit jumpy and I feel a little bit of uh, need or, or, or something creeping into my golf swing where I feel my body starting to to want to rotate a little bit I just hit some shots with my feet on the ground I feel like my trail buttock is out over, over my trail heel and I, and I want to hit some shots like that that's what I want to feel you can you can hit the ball beautifully like that I mean they're just perfect golf shots I mean, I mean, the whole tenet of uh, the Mo Norman swing when we used to teach it was that we didn't want to rotate. We wanted, and we wanted to face the ball when we hit it. And of course, the way we did that was not rotate the body. And the way we did that was corral the trail foot by not letting it raise through, through impact. So just do that, guys. Sit into that lead knee. Get the legs bent a little bit. Feel heavy in the buttocks. Sit into the shot. Don't get any better than that. As a matter of fact, I've got to tell you, every time I do that myself, every time I do that, where I have a session where I have both feet down, I just get such a free arm. Golf swing guys, the arm just, they just get away. They're just beautiful. They just rock it away from the body. I don't get the arms coming in because the body's in the way. Once we lose that grip on the ground here, we're coming up, body's starting to rotate, and, and it's getting high, you're changing the radius, so you've got to do all sorts of things. So just hit a few shots like this. Pressure on the trail foot. I, I get a lot of my weight into my heels on the inside of my heel. And when I hit it, guys, I feel that. I'm sitting into the shot. Now, by sitting into the shot and feeling I'm sitting into the shot, clearly the weight's going that way. You want to feel, you want to propagate a feeling in the, in the channel of golf swing it, as if you're sitting into the impact. You don't want to propagate a feeling in channel lock where you're jumping up at impact. You want to feel like you're going down. Because I promise you, when, when you go down, you will not you will not suck the club into the body. It just doesn't happen. Oh. You know what I think? You know what I would say to people? And I would say this to all the teachers of Channel Lock. Get your students to incorporate in their warm-up programs when they're practicing by themselves, they're warming up, to hit 30 shots with both feet on the ground. Just get them to build that into their practice route, routine or regime. And there's no reason why all of us shouldn't do that. 
and I would say that to Bill Phillips and Bob Cunningham and and Dan and Steve and um, all the guys just try that guys I tell you what it's um it's, it's a nice feeling I'm already sitting in there guys all the teachers do it just have a session by yourself Maddie and and Bill just try that Maddie Matt Gray and Bill Phillips Steve Walters Dan Hagen all those guys Bob Cunningham Bob doesn't jump out of his skin that much he's you know because he's you know he's hit a lot of golf balls in his time and he doesn't he doesn't jump out up so much but um, for the guys that got a little bit quicker swing speed than than uh, than Bob there's a propensity to want to stand up but what I find is I don't lose any speed doing that guys at all what I do is I just get much better contact yeah guys all you teachers incorporate that hit some shots you'll be amazed at the contact you get with those both feet down and, and, and pulling with that lead arm and releasing it of course I mean they're exquisite golf shots that's the only word I can I can label those shots with they are exquisite the contact is just stung and the ball flight is just good and what it does guys it takes a lot of body flash out of the shot if I get here and this is all stabilized here, here and I pull like that I can't get flashy with the hands but if I get a lot of if I get a lot of body movement you watch it you watch how flashy I get with the hands here if I get a lot of a lot, lot of body movement now I felt that I mean I dragged that a little bit because this went like that and and I don't get that in, in channel lock but but when I get flashy with the hands there's a propensity to do that okay I'm not going to lift my heel because I don't do that because that's that's drilled into my brain and my body but guys for your teachers and anybody else out there that's on the channel lock program absolutely just uh, uh, you, you think after you know two or three thousand videos I've done over the years that I would every time I come here I say Jay set the camera up check here before you set the camera up so you got a nice place to hit from it's up and down and there's holes and grass is long but I never learn okay so here we are we're going to sit into the shot guys I don't want to see this in the golf swing I don't want to see this can't hit it from there guys get in here feel loose as a goose sit into the shot feel like you're sitting down more than you normally would and we're going to have heavy feet we're going to have divers boots on now see how much I've got there lifted this a little bit because I had a fair bit of speed on that but you know why I lifted that because I didn't think about keeping it down guys it's all about programming your practice protocol has got to incorporate that so before you take it back you say both feet on the ground at impact the last thing you say I didn't say that and I was actually watching two big birds over here having a fight over something and I got distracted I still hit it great but I didn't um, didn't keep that trail foot down and that's a good thing about it. you can have a few things wrong but the ball still go good so this time that trail heel will be down because I'm going to think about it. okay JH last thing in the protocol trail heel down there it is nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that come on nice and smooth one There's a fork in the tree up here guys, it's about 10 foot wide, it's gone straight through the fork. I've been aiming at the tree but I actually caught that well enough to fly it up into the fork. And guys, that will, that, that'll help you with everything. Look, I'll hit a driver with that. You think, oh, I couldn't keep my heel down with a driver. Well, Mo Norman did. And I did when I taught 
when I taught Mo Norman swing for 10 years, I kept it down when I was teaching people. Keep it down, guys. Yeah. Oh, that's just, just, just taking pictures of the trees that goes over it. Okay, you'll get a little bit of hang back, which is good. You'll get a little bit of hang back. But that, that's good because it'll keep you pressuring into that, that trail foot. That's the good thing about that. Don't get any better than that, guys. And look at this. Look where I am here. <laughs> oh, this is a good shot. Yeah, so guys, for all the teachers, try that. Try it yourself. Hey, it takes a bit of discipline if you're someone that's been a releaser off that trail side. I mean, the teachers don't get this in this wing, but that's for the rank and file players. But guys, it just costs you so much power. I'm 100 yards, 120 yards at 45 degrees, maybe 50 degrees to the range down here. And there are balls landing here. Which means people are almost hitting it behind them to get the ball here. And 120 yards on a tangent. Wow. Maybe I should go down and hand out some cards. Well, everybody knows me. Okay, here we go. Come on, Jason. Pull with that lead here. Okay guys, you haven't heard this for a while. Haven't heard this for a while. That's the best drive I've hit since I've been on the on channel lock. That's the best one. You know why? Because I felt unbelievably stabilized at, at impact. Incredibly stabilized. So for everybody guys, I'm talking about you know all the you know the master coaches. Give it a go. And, for, and a big guy like Steve Walters. Steve, Steve, this could be great for you. Because you're a big guy, you've got a lot of mass. The more you can keep that mass in place and not have it moving a little bit on its axis, this could be great for you because you're a big, strong guy. Up, You could stand still and just... and just... Uh, just knock the earth off its axis because you'd be applying all the, the power you need. And I, yeah, guys, for big guys, stabilize, energize, Mo used to say. Stabilize, energize, release, that was Mo's. But the stabilize was the sitting into it. He didn't sit into it address, and we're digressing, but Mo was here. But when he got to here, he sat, and then he continued that sit. Look at this guys, both feet down. And you know that the, 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 the body's not rotating because the arms are finishing in front of the body. Now I wouldn't suggest to rank and file players they start trying to do it with a driver, but just get yourself a nine iron or something. Just hit a couple of shots like this, but even for the teachers guys to get the feel, just get in here. I get my toes up, I know when I'm I've got weight bias when I can lift my toes. When you can't lift your toes at a dress, your weight's in the wrong place. Now I've got a little 9 iron, it's about a 130, 5 metre, 3 quarter 9 iron. Just perfect, beautiful flight. That's all you want to do. Just do that. Most guys will be happy with that shot. I mean, that, that's a really nice little powerful goal shot. Sit into that side. Pressure into the ground, heavy feet. Just hit a few of those guys. But make sure that you release the golf club. Don't bring it through 
like that. Give yourself a nice release when you hit it. Like that. See, I've got a full release here. Don't come to, you don't want to be finishing like that. There's no power in a shot like that, that's spooning. Okay, last shot, okay. Sit into it, sit down. Don't get any better than that. And that's, that's full 9-iron distance for me. That's 100, 140 carry smooth 9-iron. Just, just perfect, 140 yards. 9-iron, that's all I want to hit it. I can hit 150, but I'm jumping out of my skin to do that. 149-iron, 158-iron, 167-iron. 176 iron. I normally go up about 12 yards. Okay guys, have a look at that. But but so the message is generally we don't want any don't want any of this and we don't want any of the arms sucking in here. Hit a couple of feet down and actually try and get that. Try and get that look about you. Try and feel the trail sides back a little bit. I'll just hit one like that. This is this is what I call an exaggerated um, drill. We'll get here and then we're gonna really release it there keep that lead knee like that both feet on the ground you can do that with a longer club they're yeah, good shots okay guys just that's just something I saw in a few of the guys so it uh, might help you out